own son. In reality, that is shying away from uh, asserting that we are no longer dealing with their property, but we are enforcing our claim of right in reclaiming our name. Although in this case, in lower case, reflecting the way in which the live born record describes it. So, in other words, when you start using that, they have some reference in their own system to a name. However, when we fill in the EIN, we are asserting our rights to the name by the fact that we've already sent in our EDP to the vital statistics and that we've also provided our life born record. So that's an explanation of, of what's to come, but also, again, thank you for your patience in that this hasn't been done in time. What has been done is some important improvements in some of the responses and some of the lies that you will have already started to see if you have been dealing with EDPs through the court or EDPs through the registrar. So I'm going to click on the link lies registrar, which you'll see on the right hand side, or if you scale down, you'll actually see it's listed as well as one of the areas of the content for ecclesiastical deed poll notes. So I'm going to click on the lies of the registrar. And you'll see that there are eight questions, or eight lies, I should say, not questions, eight lies that uh, are most common that you'll find the registrars are starting to do when you're sending in your live born record. You'll also see that the format of this has changed slightly as well, where we list the detail of the lie, we list the detail of the truth, and then some words of an answer. So again, thank you for your patience, but this is a constant evolving help and assistance to you, and uh, we're trying our level best in everything that I talk to you about to ensure that there is some support for you as you move forward and assert your rights. So line number one, uh, we do not recognize what kind of documents you send us. Now I'm looking at number one in terms of uh, the biggest lies used by registrars of vital statistics, which I've got to, by clicking on the ecclesiastical deed poll box, seeing the link from the homepage of one-heaven.org. Okay, so lie number one. <coughs> we do not recognize what kind of document you send us. Well, the truth is, deed polls have been around for centuries, and whilst being a rarer form of deed, are well known by competent members of the bar, especially those attached to the registrar. So any claim they don't know what you're talking about uh, in the remainder of the deed poll is a complete lie. I mean, it's an absolute lie. And there you see the admission, uh, the answer. Please admit to it uh, so we can follow up and use your admission as your incompetence. Another one that you'll get from the registrar, we, don't have, uh, we have no process to handle as we do not recognize the uh, kind of items which you refer. And again, of course, you know, it's a lie. It's, it's claiming that uh, unless it fits this particular box and these particular dots, uh, processes change all the time. A process is not a law. And it's certainly not a principle of law. It's a lie race. It's a custom. So the truth is that at the base of all systems of law in all jurisdictions, in all countries, there exist certain fundamentals that even if forgotten, um, exist. And they are contract law, trust law, deeds, title, property. This is what we're talking about. Its process is completely irrelevant. And I would consider, if you get that kind of answer, it's a deliberate red herring, particularly if it's in writing. Uh, line three, this is the wrong office department. You'll need to contact someone different. Fine. Who is it? Who is it? Uh, four, there is no registrar. I've actually heard that they've even tried this one. There is no registrar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, we've run away. Well, I assume if you are the Department of Vital Statistics, you are still performing some service, and if you are performing some service, you have some staff, notice to agents, notice to principal, then who manages your department? I mean, I, it's a straight dishonor. I wouldn't even have to worry about following them up. Live five, your request. Uh, you requested us to remove, destroy original documents, records, which is against the law as all records are part of the public record. We actually got a response back on this not two days ago where the letter looked very, it is very formal, wrote back and said 
that the deed poll could not be followed because it requested the removal and destruction of documents. This is complete lie. Nowhere in the ecclesiastical deeds do we request vital statistics to destroy any public record. We merely ask for any records to be cancelled and any documents that have been generated, like bonds, like promissory notes, like other financial documents, to be provided cancelled. And given these are hidden from us, they cannot be regarded as a public record. So this is a complete lie and a red herring, where they turn it on you into the assumption that you have asked for something to be destroyed. It's complete rubbish. It's another dishonour. Anyway, you also get the, the good old chestnut, which a number of you have already seen. Sending an ecclesiastical deed is a criminal threat. You know, when you get sheriffs or deputies coming around and threatening you. Now, we don't have it here yet, but i tell you one thing we will be doing on these. We will be producing affidavits for some of these lies so that you can download that affidavit. And if you do get a sheriff or a deputy or a marshal knock on your door or come to your work or come in the middle of the night and do the old, if you do this, we'll shoot you, <clears throat> get them to sign it and say, okay, you sign this document and say, I, sheriff, came at two in the morning and warned that if you send this, I will arrest you. If you sign that, okay, we'll talk about it. Because if you don't sign that, Go away and don't come back and don't play this game again. We will get that for you because I'm sick of this good old boys, two o'clock in the morning, let's get people with guns knocking at your door to threaten you that if you try and assert your rights, we will do harm to you. Well, if you're prepared to sign that document, Sheriff, then we'll talk about it. But if you're not prepared to sign it, and I tell you what, they're not going to sign it, then you can bloody well go away and stop hassling people. So I'm sorry to hear for those that are getting that kind of good old boys crap, but uh, that will come as far as giving you that kind of response. And the same goes, by the way, when we finish the section on foreclosures, where clerks refuse to receive uh, payments and deposits to get you out of being a delinquent tenant. Fine, don't accept the payment, but accept in this affidavit that you have refused the payment and therefore have refused to allow us to redeem ourselves from a delinquent tenant. Make it known. Of course, the, the, the clerk will say no, but you can't have it both ways. Either you accept our deposit in which case we are no longer delinquent, or you refuse, in which case we can no longer be called delinquent because you're obstructing justice. One or the other. And I'm sick to death of the system playing the game where it gives nothing on either side. We're going to talk about that in a second when we talk about unlawful slavery. And I'll help on the foreclosure documents, which I have promised, with that section on the website. It's not up yet. So anyway, that's one area that we've improved. The biggest lies of registrars, the biggest lies of, um, of the court. Now, um, you'll notice that there's a fifth step which we're working on, which is the Great Writ, which we'll be talking about in a moment. But before we talk about Great Writs, I want to talk now, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about some of the updates to the Covenant. So I'm going to click on the home page again. And I'm going to go into the nice looking uh, water and sky there, which is the covenant, Pactum de Singularis Calium. And I'm going to look at some important updates to the covenant since we spoke last week and very relevant to the time we're in. So the first one I'm going to look at is Article 37. I'm just going to have a quick sip of a drink and then we're going to have a look at Article 37, Slavery and Servitude. Okay, I'm going to click on that link now. I'm going to open it up. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to read some of the paragraphs, not the whole thing, but some of the paragraphs because of the importance that this is in terms of where we are at at the moment 
and the importance of what you're doing with the Ecclesiastical Depot. Because I understand, I truly understand the frustration that many of you are having, particularly when you feel that there is no reason for them to reject this. So let's go through this because this gives context to it. Article 37, Slavery and Servitude. Mm -hmm. Slavery by any name is an abomination before heaven in all its forms and has no divine, moral or legitimate basis for existence other than through force, trickery and fear. While slavery is an abomination and direct repudiation of divine law and natural law, throughout history, slavery has been claimed as lawful when certain inalienable rights were granted to slaves, when their bondage and all associated obligations and agreement were known as when remedy for emancipation existed. So if we talk about ancient Rome and the Roman Empire, masters of slaves could not work a slave more than certain hours. Household slaves had rights. They had rights. And in Rome, it was generally discouraged that slaves could not be worked more than eight to nine hours a day. It meant that slaves had their own time outside of that. I know the concept of slavery and slaves having rights seems odd, but this is back to the days when slavery and lawful slavery was formalised under the Roman Empire. Furthermore, slaves were told and shown and given certain documents to know where they stood in terms of their bondsmanship, particularly if a, a, a person was, was bonded into slavery because of debt. They knew where they stood they knew the contracts against them, and most importantly, they knew the remedy for emancipation. Now, slavery from the time of the Roman Empire up until the 13th century, contrary to the horrible, fraudulent, documents created by the Jesuits such as the Corpus Iuris Civilis created in the end of the 16th century claiming the Justinian Code permitted slavery to be life without possibility of emancipation that is unlawful slavery there is no way no way any ancient leader could possibly enforce a law that doesn't provide remedy. Why? There isn't a law on the planet that's been lawful if there isn't remedy. If there's no remedy, there's no law. Law and remedy are part of the same. The only people that think that you can have law without remedy is the parasite, the false menace, the Zionist, the clinically insane that are screaming their precious may be taken from them at the moment. And please hope that we can identify them for what they are, people in dire need of medical attention and are not evil, just criminally insane. They are the only people that have thought that you can have law without remedy. But throughout the rest of civilization, from the very first civilization, Law is not lawful unless there's remedy. In other words, slavery cannot be classed as lawful unless there is the opportunity for emancipation. And that's exactly what many slaves did. They were emancipated. And so some slaves became kings. There are even some Roman emperors that had been born slaves. So unlawful slavery is therefore any system that does not permit fair remedy for emancipation that hides the chains and obligations of bondage and arbitrarily revokes the inalienable rights of slaves and those in servitude. Now, does this sound familiar? It should. Because this is exactly what we're dealing with in a system that was introduced in 1933 to kill the otherwise lawful slave system built in 1540, we know as common law. Now, I know for many people who still proudly wear the badge of calling themselves sovereign, 
And you'll find this word sovereign still embedded.